We speak to boat owners on ways that they're adjusting to social distancing. Find out the public's reaction to a woman from Erie County who tested positive for COVID-19 and chose to disregard the stay-at-home order. And rescue crews will resume their search tomorrow morning for a missing Meadville man that fell into a creek. Live in high definition from your news leader, this is Jet 24 Action News at 11. Good evening, I'm Brian Wilk. An Erie County COVID-19 patient refusing to stay home was transported to Erie County Prison Friday night. Her hearing yesterday ruled that she can return home on electronic monitoring. Chelsea Swift has the story. A COVID-19 patient from Erie County spent Friday night in jail after violating isolation rules set out for those who test positive for the virus. County officials say the patient posed a threat to the public's health. We have something like 27 people in quarantine now because they came, either came in contact with her or came in contact with other people who came in contact with her. So we felt it was a serious enough situation that we needed to take some action to make sure that this individual was not uh, creating a threat to other people's health. County solicitor says Judge Trusilla and the court responded very quickly, holding an emergency proceeding with the patient appearing through a video call from the Erie County Prison. Uh, he released her uh, uh, back to her home confinement in isolation, which is where she was supposed to be, uh, with an electronic monitoring device uh, uh, that, that will alert us if she leaves the home again. We spoke to members of the community to hear what they think. Some are saying they aren't surprised by the woman's actions. Some people don't really care, you know, and they're, they're all over, you know, there's people that uh, refuse to believe there is even a virus and, uh, and that just proves it right there. She didn't care. Others are saying it was irresponsible for the woman to go out into public when so many people are choosing to stay home. If you're testing positive, it's just common sense that you need to be home and quarantining and staying away from people. I mean, people who aren't infected are, are staying away from people and staying home as much as they can. Chelsea Swift, Jet 24 Action News. And on May 11th, Judge Trucia will decide if the woman's isolation period should be extended. And the Pennsylvania Department of Health releasing the latest COVID-19 cases for Pennsylvania. Across the Commonwealth, there are now over 49,000 positive cases of COVID-19, and there have been 2,444 deaths reported. That's 26 more than yesterday, but... Over 191,000 people have tested negative. Now here in Erie County, we have a total of 91 confirmed cases of COVID-19, two deaths. Now that's according to the, uh, to the State Department of Health's website. Crawford still reporting 19 cases. Warren County remains at one case. And there are 37 confirmed cases reported in Chautauqua County, New York, and four deaths, and 146 confirmed cases in Ashtabula County, Ohio, with 15 deaths. And some boaters across the Bayfront are gearing up to get back on the water. Now, this coming after Governor Tom Wolf announcing the reopening of marinas. Star Boaty spoke to boat owners on ways they're preparing to set sail while also taking their part in social distancing. She joins us in the studio with more. Star? Brian, those owners we spoke to say they're eager to get back on the water and enjoy the beauty of the bayfront, but some are still waiting to get that green light. You know, we weren't going to have a season, which kind of sucks because that's what makes area bearable for us at least because the winters suck, you know, but um, it was definitely a relief. Boat owners on the bayfront are making leeway for lost time due to COVID-19. Jacob Simon and his family are already taking advantage of the May-like temperatures at their marina. Right now we're waxing it. We've been at it for like eight hours now. Almost done. Uh, it's going in Tuesday, so we're pretty excited about that. And um, they're finally letting us put the boats in. Simon says being able to get back on the water will help alleviate some stress from this pandemic. Especially with everything going on, it's you know nice to get away from everything and go have some fun, you know, because you're not really next to a lot of other people out there. So, 
Across the bayfront, the Victorian Princess is still awaiting the okay to allow guests back on board. We had a great year. I sold the boat out a lot this year, and a lot of people we have to give um, deposits back for. A lot of people that they paid for the cruise ahead of time, and their conventions canceled, and we had to give them back all their money. So, yeah, it's, it's tough. It's been tough on us. The Victorian Princess already has plans to keep you safe once it's allowed to set sail with its day and nighttime cruises. We're taking away some of the tables um, so that um, people are not so congested on the boat. So we'd have, like, say, four people versus a table versus six. Um, get rid of the buffet line and um, open up the area. Before setting sail, the riverboat's exterior will also be repainted with its vibrant blue and red colors. Now, the owners say they'll look into creating a more formal sit-down dinner for guests to enjoy while following the health department's guidelines. Brian. Thank you, Star. The search will continue Monday morning for a missing Meadville man. According to park rangers, 38-year-old Jeffrey Hamby II fell into the Slippery Rock Creek at McConnell's Mills State Park after hiking with friends. Now, Hamby reportedly fell into the water about uh, 2.30 Saturday afternoon. Search and rescue crews were out all day Saturday, as well as today, looking for him. Now, the search has been called off for now, but it will resume tomorrow at 8 a.m. And Erie will have the chance to view a salute to health care workers, first responders, and essential employees in the COVID-19 virus. The 910th Air Left Wing of the U.S. Air Force Reserve, based in Youngstown, Ohio, will launch their Herx Over America. The C-130H Hercules aircraft will fly over Erie, Cleveland and Akron. Now, according to a release from the 910th Air Left Wing Public Affairs Office, the flyover is scheduled for late Monday morning. And here at Jet 24 Action News, we're taking the time to salute our area high school seniors. So, this is our way of saying congratulations to everyone in the class of 2020. And coming up on Jet 24 Action News, now the temperatures were very nice today. Folks out on Presque Isle, they were walking, bike riding, and boating. I was actually going to do some parasailing on my uh, lunch break, but didn't get a chance to. That's after Craig's forecast. Craig. Yeah, real stunner today, Brian. However, cooler weather uh, will prevail much of the week. We'll talk about the forecasts next. For your news leader, you're watching Brian Wilk, meteorologist Craig Flint, and Mike Fenner with sports. This is Jet 24 Action News, your news leader.